Have you ever tried to make an image gallery in your WordPress website and it just doesn't look the way you want it to look or function the way you need it to function? Well, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and solve that. Hey everyone, I'm Donna with Brainstorm Force and I make WordPress video tutorials of all of our products. If you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and search for image gallery and we're going to go ahead and click and drag that into our Elementor page builder. From here, we have a few different options underneath the gallery. We have grid, masonry, and carousel. And we're going to go through these uh, in just a bit. Let's go ahead and add some images. So we can go ahead and do that through this button. And we have our media library here. So let's go ahead and click on a few pictures to add. And I'm going to go also and choose a few other images here. Create new gallery. So from here we have our uh, way we so that we can edit the gallery. We have an option down here for captions, and we can go ahead and add the captions as you wish. Basically, this is a title of the of the um, of the image, so that you can go ahead and let people know what they're looking at. Let's go ahead and insert the gallery here. From here, we have our grid layout, and if we choose masonry. We get this sort of style where they go ahead and they fill the empty spaces so that there's nothing, uh, there's no big gaps like there is with the grid. So if you're working with different size images, I definitely suggest a masonry uh, layout because that's the one that's going to look the best. We also have the carousel and we can go ahead and choose that. And then we have the option to choose how many pictures we wanna show and they can scroll through these right here as you can see here. Let's go ahead and select some of our images. I'm going to go ahead and just narrow it down to just a couple so that we can go ahead and make it seamless. And let's add a couple more images here. Okay. So you see we have four images here. So we, right now we are under carousel. Let's go ahead and under carousel, we can actually choose the amount of images to show. Uh, how many images we want to scroll. If we want this to autoplay, so it's going to continue to loop through. And then we can have this as infinite loop and we can change the transition speed as well. Let's add one more image just so that we have. Have some way to show the carousel. So right now we have four. We can choose three. We can choose five. However many you want to show there how many images we want to scroll. So we can do one, one image at a time, or we can do it so it's the amount of images that are currently showing. So we can do five images at a time. We also have an autoplay feature. So we can go ahead and turn this on and it'll automatically scroll through the pictures uh, at the determined speed that you choose right here. Right now this is five seconds. So we can choose this to be two seconds if we wish. So this will go ahead and change every two seconds. We also have pause on hover. We can turn that on and off. If we hover over top of any of these images, we can go ahead and have this carousel pause so that we can take a look at the images that, that we're hovering over. Once we leave the carousel and we're not hovering over it anymore, then the carousel will start to slide again. Transition speed right now, we have it at half a second. So if we change this to five seconds for the transition speed, it will take a lot longer to transition. Or if we do a two second transition speed, we have that option as well. The infinite, infinite loop, I skipped over that. The, uh, it, the ability to go ahead and just keep scrolling through the images, no matter how many times you click over. And if you click off the infinite loop, then once you get to the end of the carousel, and that's it. You can't scroll anymore until, unless you turn on infinite loop. For the navigation, we have arrows and dots. So you can see our arrows on the left and the right, and we have the dots at the bottom. We can just do arrows, just do dots, or we can have none. So it's just, just this right here. We have the additional options down here. So we can choose our, uh, our image size. So any of these sizes that you can choose from, and then you can also do a few other things. The click action 
we can take it so that you can do a light box, a media file, the attachment page, a custom link, or none. The light boxes, if you choose that, then whenever you click on the image, the light box of this image will show up and you can actually navigate through the other images with the arrows. If you choose the media file, then it'll open up in the uh, new tab or uh, the same tab and um, it will show the media file and the whole. We have the attachment page and then we have the custom link, which we saw earlier underneath the gallery. And if we go to the images and we have this right here, we have the ability to click on the image and we have our custom link down here so that we can go ahead and paste in any link we want there. For the link target, we can have it as a new window or the same window uh, under the custom link. If we go back to Lightbox, we, can we don't see those options there. Uh, if we go to ordering, we can go ahead and do default or random. So it'll randomize the images every time you load the page. Or you can have it as default. So however you sort that in your gallery up here at the top. And then of course we have our show caption. We can have that on never. We can have that on the image or on hover right here. And if we do on the image, you see that we go ahead and we have the text of the caption that we entered earlier with a nice background behind it. We can also do on hover only. So that only happens when we hover over top of this. Let's go ahead and do a few styling options. On the style options, we have the columns gap for the carousel. We can go ahead and change that. The thumbnail size, we have the ability to change the normal and the hover, so we can actually scale them in or out. And we have those same abilities on hover. The opacity, we can go ahead and do that, so we can turn that on, or we can lower that or increase that. And then we have the filter effect, kind of like your popular um, photography software where you can go ahead and choose filter effects as well. There you go. We also have overlay color where we can go ahead and determine an overlay color if we want to do that. Really that's to help with the the um, the captions that we add to the images. For the caption we have the ability to do left center and right aligned. So you can see we left it, we can do a right, and we can do center. We have the ability to change the HTML tag depending on our SEO needs. Topography, we can go ahead and increase or decrease the size of the caption right here, as you can see. We can do all of the font family, the weight, transformation, all of those abilities that we normally have with topography. We can change the color. So we can actually change the color of the of the lettering right here so we can go ahead and make that a different color green we can make that blue whatever you want to do for that and we also have the background of changing abilities so we can make that green we can make that completely black we have all of these different options to do let's go ahead and change that back we have the ability to change the padding. So we can do the padding. So the top, bottom, left, and right, we can go ahead and change those to be whatever we want. And then the navigation, we can go ahead and position these wherever we want. So the arrow positions, we can do outside or inside. Arrow size, we can increase or decrease. And the color, of course. For the dots, we can increase the size or decrease the size. And we also have the ability to change the colors for that as well. Back to the gallery layout, let's go ahead and navigate over here to the grid. Now we have a few different options when it comes to grid. We have the columns that we can go ahead and choose. So we can choose how many columns we want. And then we have this ability to do category filters. So if we go ahead and turn this on, Right up here, you see we have all. And we can go ahead and add different categories to these in the gallery section up here at the top. So if we go ahead and click on this, we can go ahead and do this as eggs. Uh, and then we have cake. We can do another one for eggs. 
salmon. We could do a, like a fish. Or let's do entree. And then we have the abilities to do more, more options there. So once we've gone ahead and we've inserted those categories and we've updated our page, we can see that we have all of them right here. So if we go to cake, uh, we have the dessert, we have eggs, we have entrees. So we have the ability to go ahead and insert those uh, as needed. And this is great for portfolio items. This is great for images. If you wanna go ahead and have different style of images, you can go ahead and add categories to those. So it's a really, really widespread of what you can do with the image gallery widget. So you can go ahead and do all of that. I hope you guys find this video useful. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And we will see you guys next time.